certainly they get some friends you know or some relation with uh, some people who slowly you know um, first uh, they are like uh, they are helping but in the background they are selling their information by using social engineering so that is also you know another aspect and that that is what is harmful so international social engineering are you know a tool almost everywhere the agencies the attackers many other people use it okay so there is no path for human stupidity this we can say so you can understand so human being will have their stupidity it doesn't matter how smart they are because you know we human being have some inbuilt nature of leaving others and you know uh, giving some space to other ultimately uh, we have to give or we used to give we can't be too much uh, isolated from our friends and uh, surrounded people and uh, so that is that leads uh, many times stupidity like you know uh, re, uh, opening up with a uh, secret information right and uh, it does it is saying that doesn't have any patch that means uh, the, there is no software or code what you can install on human, you know, human being and this stupidity will be stopped so there is no patch for human stupidity at its core it is manipulating a person into knowingly or unknowingly giving up information essentially hacking into a person to steal valuable information so what having social engineering instead of directly try to hack a computer first hacking into a person still valuable information now using those information how to guess that person's credentials and charges and uh, what can they think right so it can be psychological manipulation like uh, trickery or uh, deception from the uh, sorry, for the purpose of information gathering so using this uh, it, uh, it can be done for information gathering for a person now you can imagine that if this person is a very important or uh, some key person in a company then it can uh, you know by manipulating that uh, kind of person the company information be, information can be also be uh, you know gathered the social engineering it is a way of you know, for criminals to gain access to information systems so you know if uh, some person is there who is uh, you know who may who is a system administration or say database administrator of some company and that company is having uh, uh, maintaining information system so you know uh, by manipulating that person the attacker can get uh, access to that uh, you know organizations uh, uh, data also that is what uh, you know how it is very can say it is harmful okay and see the purpose for social engineering is usually to secretly install spyware other malicious software or to trick person into handling over password sorry handing over password and other and other sensitive financial or personal information so many times it happens you know when you are in Um, you know, some organization, a company, and uh, say somebody is uh, main, uh, maintaining password or uh, say keeping password and username of some critical database or some system. Okay, so people may manipulate them. Okay, like okay, I need your computer for few minutes. Can you give your username and password? Suddenly, you know, somebody, some of the colleague calls, and uh, you know. as you know based on the human beings you know, brain and their belief and trust on people usually people give okay this is my username this is my password you log in and do your work but that can be a point of social engineering and they these people can you know use this uh, information to do any harmful act okay 
So, human based is one way that you are doing social engineering, another is computer based. So, in human based social engineering, gathering critical information by interaction with the human, or attacks of this category exploit, trust, fear, and helping nature of human. So, you understand that most of the human being are having this you know, inbuilt properties like uh, trusting others, fearing uh, for some of the uh, losses, financial and reputation losses, okay, and even uh, helping nature of human beings. So, all these things are being uh, usually exploit, attackers uh, exploits uh, to gain access to their systems. Okay, and computer based social media carried out when the aid of uh, computers uh, with the aid of computers like you know somebody starts a social media account or some twitter account or the other uh, you know websites uh, to search your personal information like you know many times uh, you, know, you will find this becomes very severe you know when you will start sending your cvs for job uh, many times it happens that you search uh, online and you certainly will find the Google is showing your full CV. It happened with me of you know, once. You know. uh, it is, uh, I think, in 2016. At uh, that time, I had uh, sent my CV to Galgotia University. Okay. And uh, after a few days, when I searched my name on Google, at the first result, it is showing a PDF. Immediately I downloaded the PDF and it was my CV. You can imagine, and uh, I then I checked from where it is getting downloaded. I have seen that it is uh, the web server of Galgate University. They kept their web server open and asked other people that you can upload anything uh, like CV and all. They can even understand. Imagine this CV is having most of our information and uh, they don't care about it. So these are some very serious problem with, uh, you know, many organizations uh, nowadays. Now, gathering information can be you know, many types, like uh, credential information, like, you know, username, password, and uh, to access uh, some of your, uh, you know, places where you have access, and to, log to access uh, all these places by using you know, the victims or uh, the victims uh, identity uh, the attacker can uh, gather the credential information for the victim then access detail like uh, you know where you have access again say in some server room uh, in some some the database server or some other places where you have access to so those places so credential mainly User name and password and access details are uh, like your uh, biometric things, you know, access your cards, uh, the smart card, definitely. Okay, and authorization detail. Okay, so, uh, other, uh, sorry, biometrics comes here. Like, you know, exploiting the biometric is quite easy nowadays. Uh, like, uh, um, if uh, the fingerprint can be calculated, uh, sorry, cal can be collected by some uh, attacker, they can uh, generate fake uh, or dummy fingerprint using what uh, they can access or authorize they themselves as, a, as you. Okay. So, and if, uh, in some cases, if there is an Irish recognition system to, you know, enter into some uh, uh, building okay so uh, if uh, you know somebody have taken a very good picture of uh, somebody's eyes by showing that picture they can make full uh, this uh, an authentication system and they can be authenticated that attacker can be authenticated themselves that uh, as a victim or as that person you know, as the original person so social engineering is obtaining simple information such as your pet's name, where you are from, 
the places you have visited, information that you have given out freely to your friends, some more information are looking for as well. So you can see this past part, this state's name, where you are from, places you have visited, all these things are you know, free, freely available on your social media uh, page. Right, and if you have a friend circle group and most of them knows all these things, right? Then think of yourself as a working computer, as a working computer, full of information about yourself. So basically, uh, people should think themselves that uh, they are just a working computer moving around and uh, it is full of information about themselves. So you have name, address, valuables. Okay, now categorize those items like business does. Like how we can categorize our information. Like personally identifiable information. What are the things comes there? The other data. Other number, PAN number, and etc. So financial information like uh, your bank account detail, then <laughs> your uh, other financial information like you know where you put your data, stock stock market uh, data and all, okay. Then card holder data like uh, your uh, debit card, credit cards, right. Health insurance data, so many of the people uh, does health, health insurance and for um, this uh, people need to submit many of the information uh, like uh, height, it is previous health record habits many things are you know, available with the uh, health insurance data then uh, credit card reporting data so many th all these things are uh, you know that people can categorize and uh, can keep them safe uh, so that uh, it should not be uh, you know, accessible by some attacker uh, to make any social uh, engineering on us. Take a close look at some of the secure sites you log into. Okay. Some have a secret question. You have to answer. If you cannot remember your username or password, uh, so many times, you know, if you click on uh, forget password, if you click on forget password, it will, you know, it ask you answer some secret question. So, previously it was very common and now, still now, it is there and uh, if you ask me, every time I set some secret, secret question, I will always uh, forget what the answer I have written. This is the, you know, the, I think worst thing in the security and the, many of the uh, website, good websites is even uh, nowadays if you see CAMS website, CAMS is a central record keeping agency. Okay. Well, like if you have, uh, you know, um, mutual funds and uh, if you do stock trading and all, all your records are going to be tracked by one of these uh, agency called CAM. CAM can track your main records. Okay, and they are a government certified agency. But uh, if you forget your uh, CAM's username password, it will ask you for secret question answer what you had said at the time of registration. Okay, so this is the uh, one thing. Now the question seems pretty tough for outsider looking into trying to hack into your account, like what's the name of your first page, what's your median name, when was your mother or father born, and where were you born? 
Now, if I am your Facebook Facebook friend, is it very hard for me to find out this answer? It is you know, almost you know, for 90% people, these information are available. And nowadays I have seen people are you know, so innocent, they you know, uh, keep their family map also on Facebook. They tag somebody as my brother, somebody as my wife, somebody as engaged, somebody father, somebody as mother. What is, why do you need to tag everybody in your profile? Nobody needs it. When it makes uh, the attacker to gather information about you using social engineering very easily. So if you see, if, you know, I, previously it was very common uh, who were very uh, using Google Mail, they know. Use a question and you will open uh, the, the Google account the first time, the Gmail account first time. What are the questions they were asking? What is your primary frequent flying number? What is your uh, library card number? So you can understand. Um, any of your friend can know what is your library card number. What is your first phone number? Any of your friend knows, uh, can you know, uh, find out what was your first phone number. What is your first teacher's name? Very simple. Okay. Uh, write my own question. So this is something, uh, I think, uh, this is something useful. Write your own question and answer it. So what is the life cycle of social engineering? First is gathering information. So in-person uh, tactics that uh, can be used to collect information about targeted system to help identify, uh, identify uh, attack vectors and targets. Then relationship development. Develop a relationship with the target. A target can be um, can mostly in human beings. Okay, and it can be some uh, system element. Then exploitation. Utilize uh, an attracted information and relationship to break through the target. In execution, identifying the social engineering strategies uh, that can be utilized in cybersecurity. Now, way to gather information. First is trust, detect, uh, direct approach or technical uh, expert. So there is two ways. One is direct approach and uh, meet the people uh, create friendship and win their trust or you know being a technical expert it can be done then the desire to be helpful is you know the attacker can uh, behave certainly uh, you know certainly some attacker can arrive around you and uh, they can behave like they are very helpful and they are trying to help you all the time that is one of the very alarming uh, behavior, you know, unknown people uh, certainly shows. Okay. Then it can be direct approach and technical expert or voice of authority. Like you know, sometimes uh, you know you have uh, arrived in uh, some place uh, with authority that somebody is coming and saying, "Oh, this uh, you want to go to this place? You come with me. So I will uh, you know, manage uh, this for you." So these uh, you know, these are the voice of authority. And uh, which may be for the reason that they want to collect information for, about you. The wish to get something for nothing, like Trojan horse chain, chain email. Then curiosity, another uh, Trojan horse open email attachment from unknown senders. So this this can be, you know, you suddenly you know, got an email from an unknown sender and uh, say, with that email there is an attachment. And due to curiosity, people uh, used to open the attachment, but it is something uh, you know uh, to be avoided. Due to curiosity, people should not uh, open any attachment coming with the email. Okay, better you block that email. If uh, at the first communication itself, if somebody is sending attachment, better to block it. It can be any attachment. Uh, don't think that uh, if somebody attached an image, that means it is not harmful. Images are the most, uh, you know, the suspicious thing because in image very easily malicious coded can be embedded. Okay. Here of unknown or losing something like, you know, pop-up window. Suddenly you get a pop-up window that you click on this. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, your account, this particular account will be closed or will be suspended. 
pop-up and many people will click on the pop-up window and whatever information you ask they will provide you know <coughs> so this is fear of unknown this can this can be exploited then ignorance you know, dumpster deliver and uh, you know direct approach if somebody finds that okay this person is ignorant about uh, the events happening around then they can uh, you know take that opportunity of the person's ignorance then carelessness is another like uh, you know dumpster driving against spying and image dropping can happen and then pen uh, pretexting creating a fake fish scenario you know then phishing is another way and send out a uh, bite or bait to fool victim into giving into their information then is fake website model to look like real thing but log in with uh, real credential that are now compromised okay, so fake websites are like you know some website which looks like the some uh, look like some of the official website which uh, the targeted uh, victim is uh, visit Now suddenly he got the link of the fake website. Click on it, and the website will open and look like uh, the original one. So they will enter the username, password, and whatever other thing it will ask. And later they will, uh, you know, may realize, and they are not if they are not smart enough, they may not uh, realize that uh, it was a fake website and uh, collected all their information. Understand? Then why social engineering is effective? Because security policies are the are as strong as the weakest link, and humans are the most susceptible factor. Difficult to detect social engineering attempts. There is no method to ensure the complete security from social engineering attack, and no specific software or hardware for defending against a social engineering attack. So it is very you know what software and uh, hardware will put on human brain. It is not possible. All this, this is all this reason. This social engineering is still effective. Okay. Now, common target of social engineering are uh, receptionist and help desk person, then technical support executive, then vendors of target organization, system administrator, and other user in the organization. So here you can see secure-based uh, model uh, of social engineering in SNS. Uh, at the center, it is the threat, and the, uh, I know, uh, it is uh, a concentration of three things. One is the privacy settings, content, and friendships and connection. That means what privacy settings you have kept on your system and your You know accounts like Gmail and all uh, the two-factor authentications are available nowadays. Like you know anybody, if anyone logs in your uh, your Gmail, you will immediately get an SMS. Okay, so all these things uh, are you know created or not? That is uh, the privacy setting. Then what content you are putting on uh, social websites and uh, you are sharing with others? <coughs> to whom you are doing friendship and What connection you are make, making in your daily life that matters, and all these things together uh, defines the threat imposed on you. Okay, so this content and privacy uh, settings, uh, you know, deals with the information gathering and uh, content and friends and all this uh, perform the tactic. What tactic uh, you know the attacker will uh, use on you? Then. Reach victim. How to reach the victim? Uh, definitely using the privacy settings. You know, if they are uh, reaching to your accounts, account privacy setting is important. And uh, you know what your social circle you are uh, getting into that uh, helps. 